What's going on, guys? Pegasus from the Wise Guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Dry Tron deck profile. Let's get into it, shall we? Um, and shout out to the sleeves, by the way, man. Shout out to the sleeves. Make sure you get yourself some. Find them online. Somebody got them for me. Please don't ask me where I got them from because I don't know. Artifact Lancia. Um, I feel like I want to bump this up. Uh, being able to stop Fluanderies, not lose to the shifter decks as much. I feel like it's a key choice that you may want to consider. But Vanity's Ruler is my choice for the variant just because a little more factor pain is still really, really strong skipping people's phases. But however, it's not quite enough for what I want. And being able to just flat out crack them in the dome with a Vanity's Ruler and if they have the out, you still got to have it or not. So it is what it is with that. Diviner of the Herald, uh, as far as the one-offs. And then from there, I could play again. I could play an orange light here, um, but I'm not going for Mirage Lights just because it was not resolving for me in testing, like at all. And therefore, if I'm not playing Mirage Lights, what am I playing Orange Light for? And I kind of have other cards that I want to stop a little bit more, and Orange Light wasn't as live as often as the other cards. So that was the reasoning behind that. I'm playing double Ghost Bell. It's a little bit different. Um, but double Ghost Bell simply because uh, countering anybody that's trying to banish your stuff out of the graveyard by stopping them from banishing your stuff out of the graveyard is really, really pertinent. I really feel like you could play three of this almost. Um, you can have a little bit of a mini weird um, combo, a little bit. It's it's kind of hard to describe, but basically with Herald and any one of the Drytrons, there, there is a Herald play there. Um, it, I did it once in like a past like 50 games. It's not gonna come up a lot, but it still can be kind of decent if you didn't get to the diviner. It just is what it is. Can't say enough about Ghost Bell. My bad. I had to turn turn the spotlight on for y'all a little bit, man. Turn the spotlight on for y'all. All right, moving on. Um, now the Drytron names. Uh, Drytron Alpha, Thuban. Um, again, searches Ritual Monsters. Zeta. Searches the spells. Gamma grabs back from the graveyard. Delta draws. And yes, I'm even playing the 13th name, which is Drychon Beta Rastaban, simply because Crow, because of Bestial, because of Shifter, because of so much other stuff. This actually kind of matters right now. And I also feel that you always want to open two names, so why not play another one? Just is what it is with that. Can't say enough about uh, how much you need to play that many names because the names are everything in this deck and therefore I don't see why people have a hard time with that. If you're not playing maxed out names, you have to be playing Prosperity. And then still, you want to get kind of close except for the Delta. Cyber Angel Benton is the next card I wanted to talk about as well as Natasha. Obviously, with this being at three, Orange Light getting hit down to one. The variance and why I didn't want to play the Orange Light that much anymore is just because uh, a lot of the stuff that I want to ha hold the Orange Light for, it's just getting shut off by my opponent's cards being better than mine. And Mirage Lights is a powerful card, but compared to some of the new cards, it just isn't. Therefore, just getting straight to a Ben 10 to get straight to a Natasha, in my opinion, is the better philosophy because a lot of times they're putting monsters on the board and they're interacting with you. And with cards like Ghost Spell and cards like Cyber Angel Benton being able to grab Natasha, if your opponent drops like a Bestial on you, for instance, being able to steal it away when Natasha, if they don't have multiple Bestial names or they didn't time it perfectly against you, and they're not going to because they're going to want to take out one of your dry Drytron names, this has been really, really dumb. Because a lot of the times you can just change your combo up a little bit if you're going first and they crack you with a Bestial and you just take the Bestial and the Bestial monster is a level six. And then therefore, if you can get to back to a Ben 10, you overlay for Beatrice and you actually get to extend more off of the uh, Swords, the, uh, I said Sword Soul. I've been playing so much Sword Soul Bestial with friends and building decks for a uh, good homie of mine that I definitely feel like, guys, Bestials isn't, that oppressive to the deck but it definitely does hurt a lot so you got to have some kind of game plan for it that's kind of my game plan it's not going too heavy but still having the perfect answer the best answer that i could come up with the big homie just because you get drolled you get um shifted you get something in some kind of way or your opponent is has went first and you need to just clear a board very very quickly 
I'm not playing Dark Ruler in this version, so I don't do that quite as often, but it's still really key to have this card in the deck. And he's a collector's rare. He's pimp. Clean, man. Moving on. Um, speaking of collector's rare, also very, very clean. You guys see it, man. Can't say enough about how much I love this deck and the, the rarity. Um, the rarity in this deck is, is, is absolutely insane. I wish they would keep going with some of the other cards. Like this card, for instance, Stratron Fafnir. I want to play um, one more just to have uh, two Fafnir, three Nova, and then that many names that I'm playing. But don't need all that because Foolish Burial is a little bit like having any name in a different sense. And this is also like having any name in a different sense. So you don't want to like have redundant cards. So that's why I picked this card. Double Cyber Emergency. Um, the redundancy of playing three of these. Yes, you can actually grab the, the Ritual Monster that you just saw, but I, I don't want to keep seeing this card because it turns into a brick you see two of them. And they can add themselves back when they're negated anyway. So it is what it is with that. Drytron Nova. Um, there is weird numbers where people are playing two and then two of the Fafnir. I get it, um, but Drytron Nova is E-Telly, so um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to try to theory too long on that. Uh, Droplet, this is kind of where um, the deck is still gas. It's still the, still one of the best decks to play Droplet. Um, shout out to Infernoid. It's also one of the best decks to play Droplet in. And make sure that you go vote on the community page what deck you want to see next because Infernoids and Ishizu is one of them. And y'all have asked me about that. Forbidden Droplet, though, in this deck, nuts. Discard the Drytrons. Blow your opponent out. And you also have to have certain answers for cards like Rukalos, cards like Abyss Dweller. Cards like Shifter are still a problem, but most of the time, all of your onboard stuff, Wind Barrier statues, this guy, because birds are chirping. There's so many other cards that you have to worry about hitting with a droplet that it's just really, really key. Now, yes, this does lose the shifter, but it's still really, really key to have. And because of the last six cards in my deck, I really feel like this is a perfect card to play. And then these next six cards are perfect cards to play because, well, every deck right now activates during your main phase and they operate on either turn. And being able to steal from your opponent and then make either make monsters, look in their hand, or flat out draw cards to overpower them, which Drytron will still do. Do not be fooled, Drytron will still do that. The fact that Sword Soul and Drytron are rogue decks right now lets you know how fast the game is right now. And these cards are really, really key. Also with the Biss deals, if they drop them on you and they didn't quite do enough, and it can actually get you to another name because you could normal summon a Diviner. Sometimes if your ruler stuff gets interrupted or you're going second and you can't quite like Zeus and then Tribute for Vanity's ruler, I feel like having talents in the deck to be able to take some of the Biss deals and then overlay with them or break your opponent's board more with them. This is just, it just makes it a backfire on your opponent. And triple talents is what I would recommend just because I always want to see it. I usually don't play three, I play two. But in this case, I'm playing three because it's just a, a method to what the deck has to do to be able to compete. I'm playing Imperm as my last three slots. Imperm because of Dweller, really. Um, a lot of the, the effects that stop this deck right now are all quick effects. And so for that instance, for that reason, for that uh, necessity, you have to have a card like Imperm to be on more often than not. Dark Ruler for me sometimes has just been getting picked off. People have been playing Solemn. People have been playing a Pointer. People have been playing so many answers. People have been playing Crime. And I just don't get quite as far. Whereas Imperm, it's more often and more live for longer periods of time. Therefore, it's a little bit better than Dark Ruler in my opinion right now. But Dark Ruler is still Dark Ruler and it is what it is with that. As far as the extra deck, getting into the extra deck, I'm not playing Herald of Mirage Lights, but I want to in this version. Um, currently, I'm playing Link Karibo, IP Mascarena. Nightmare Cerberus. This is just how I play it. Um, Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn. I do that a lot where I break boards and then link up and then leave these on the board. Sometimes with these decks, you used to just get the turn back to you and then you would just clap them with Drytron and they would lose. Some of these decks now, you can't quite kill them. Like Cash Tier, you can't quite kill like that. Uh, tier limit the tier zero stuff you can't quite kill it like that so a lot of times you find yourself pushing through boards 
but not being able to quite kill them. And because I'm not playing, I'm not actually playing uh, one of the Link 4 uh, kill switches because I wasn't I wasn't needing it. I literally wasn't. I was just clearing the board and then I'd have like Draconids on the board. It didn't matter if I had Moral Sword or whatever. So a lot of times I'm just going for the breaking right now. And yes, you can pull this off where this is pointing at this, it's pointing at this in the middle, stuff like that. It happens a lot. And being able to draw and link up and do all that stuff, it's just really, really key. IP Masquerade, obviously, is IP. Um, I'm, I go into this over um, Herald of Mirage Lights. As far as what I go into with the IP Masquerade, as we move her out of the way, uh, Appaloosa, still love this card. Um, still with IP, being able to just deal with a card like Lightning Storm, etc., etc. It just has a, a, a very strong hold, very strong hold on the game still. If you can whittle your opponent's resources down to where they're kind of in a limited position, maybe four cards or less, Appaloosa becomes dumber and dumber and dumber. And a lot of times your setups, if you can't get to Vanity's Ruler, which happens a lot, you can't quite push through their board, which happens a lot. And being able to link away their board, which happens a lot. Sometimes you may just need to go into IP and then jump into the, the uh, the bow goddess so whether you're pushing through a board or whether you're going first it just is what it is underworld goddess you got to out stuff that you can't out and then getting into the exceeds and the rest of the extra deck uh double maybe beta fafnir i want to play three because um when cash tier really takes over um well i don't know if they're if everybody's playing reaper and drytron like sort of matters then this will get reaper to sleep but if it doesn't, um, you're gonna get mind hackered out of one of these easily. So like, then you're limited to one and then you can't, you have no grind game. So in my opinion, Dry Trauma Beta Fafnir may actually be a three of at some point, especially if you wanna play like the Utopia Draco stuff, just options that you can mess around with. Um, Assembled Nightingale, um, you don't need Fucho, it's nice to have, um, but this card definitely helps you play around Shifter, helps you get to a Zeus, uh, helps you do a little bit of damage quickly if you have a big board that you can't deal with. Um, playing around Shifter, basically just put material. If you get Shifter, you just put two Drytrons under that. And then um, if you need to save this card, just try to save the one that doesn't matter quite as much to you. So a lot of times if I have Drytron Zeta up under this and already have the ritual spell, slip it right up under there. Survive. Or push. Card's very, very versatile. Fucho can't push, so that's why that card's a little bit better. Zeus. Cause you got to zoom some and uh beatrice um again been stealing bestials and making beatrice like crazy so that happens a lot this deck is not as dead as people think it is i promise you it is not and then zeus to white people's boards is not quite as powerful without a uh, mystic mind being able to do that repeatedly um so i'm playing a, a card in that slot i was playing i was playing like multiple Zeus and I'll just experiment with that card that's this has been Mirage Lights this is this has been so many different cards right now it's the it's uh Black Rose Dragon and Black Rose Dragon you summon it with Diviner sending an Arclight or an Entis that usually if it's an Entis you pop a card and then with one Drytron name Black Rose is a, is the rest of the cards so like if you know where something is or you're just trying to push through boards boom hit them with a Diviner with one name Black Rose keep going can be something else very, very easily, and is obviously for the Diviner targets. The side deck can be really whatever in the hell you want to, but just to show something kind of cool that everybody should already know. Anytime you're playing any of these decks, and I can do an entire video on this, because I feel like why the hell would you not play this card for as unfair as it is? If they can't get this off the board, if you just play Drytron normally and you and you you open this card, you can kind of stop short. You can just try to play normally. If you read a nib, then stop short or get to a Vanity's Ruler very quickly. But if you have this, this is a Wing Beast. And if you open this, and yes, you can play like Trap Trick if you really want to be toxic. Um, Featherstorm and skipping somebody's turn is stupid. And any deck that any of you are playing, it doesn't matter if it's Drytron, doesn't matter if it's actually Fluandries or a Wing Beast deck, doesn't matter what the hell it is. This card is ridiculous. And I actually think it's gonna come back because this deck is coming back. And you've already seen the FDK that Yassine has come up with, so God help us all. As far as uh, the rest of the side deck though, really it's whatever the hell is around you. These are just generically good choices in my opinion. Because you know, time, because boards, because Lava Golem is Lava Golem. 
And I'm citing the called by the grave because you can't call by the grave at Biz Tool. And that happens a lot. Where I'm like, I have called by the grave and it's just sitting in my hand doing nothing. However, like here, you still want it. And with that, I appreciate you for tuning in. Pegasus out. Ciao, man.